want to welcome you in to Elgin High School on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon turning into evening. Tonight's match between your Elgin Wildcats and the visiting Pflugerville Weiss Wolves. I'm Jay Kerbin with you for the call tonight here on Vipe Live. Joining me in the booth, first time on the Elgin Soccer Broadcast, is my good friend Dylan Zisman. Dylan, how you feeling tonight, man? I'm excited. Uh, love myself a good soccer match. Just happy to be here. Yeah, so Dylan, you do you have soccer playing experience or just officiating? Uh, I have a little bit of both. I played soccer for the better part of nine years, then gave it up to ref for another seven. So my more recent expertise lies in the officiating field. Got it. Our, our resident Mike Pereira in the booth tonight. I know that's the wrong football, but still. Call tonight, <laughs> tonight the uh, the Elgin Wildcats come into the game at 3-5-1 and one in district play, putting them fifth in the table. They go up against the Weiss Wolves, who at 4-2-2 two two represent their competition for that fourth and final playoff spot. As the PA announcer gets us started. We'll let you listen in. And both teams now lining up for the National Anthem.
Nice to hear the playing of the Star Spangled Banner here at Wildcat Stadium, the home of your Elgin Wildcats. Thank you, fans. Good luck, and go Lady Cats. As the pregame festivities conclude, and we get set to prepare for opening kickoff. Wildcats come into this game looking to build off momentum from their previous game, a win 2-0 over Cedar Creek. They also look to avenge a loss to Weiss in the reverse fixture earlier this month. That came by a final score of 2-0. And Coach Taylor Kanzler said that was one of the better games they played this season. They learned a lot from the way that Weiss was able to pass and move the ball through the midfield. And today, Dylan, Elgin is hoping to spark their attack with some solid midfield buildup. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they play up front. Uh, one thing that I've really noticed from the start is the presence of two center referees. Uh, and it's a little unorthodox, but I guess that's the way they do it here in this league. But it's going to be interesting to note how uh, these quick and short plays closer to the touch lines are going to be handled by two referees manning the corners in what's most likely going to be a diagonally set officiating game. Yeah, if you're new to uh, Texas high school soccer, that, that would stick out, right, as something unusual. No assistant referees running along the sidelines, but rather the two, in this case men, in yellow, controlling today's match. The Weiss Wolves come into this match at 4-2-2. Two, and two. As I mentioned, they've been on a pretty good run of form lately. They had a dramatic 5-5 tie against Pflugerville yesterday involved to come from behind and you know Pflugerville is still unbeaten at 7-0-1 top of the table so this Weiss team comes in with some momentum after forcing a tie against them. Meanwhile in their match before that they were 6-0 victors over Pflugerville Connolly so it's been a high-flying Weiss offense 11 goals in the last two games should present a formidable challenge for the Elgin back line today which is already short Isabella Estrada who is out today with a knee injury she is replaced at the back by Julia Rosales as both teams take the field the respective goalkeepers today for the Weiss Wolves, Haley Medlock, the sophomore in net today, has a even younger goalie on the opposite side. The Wildcats goalie today is Julie Almasan, the freshman who has put together some sparkling performances at times this year for her Wildcat squad. And you know, it's a good cool moment for the Elgin soccer program. I called the men's game last Friday. Both teams right now have freshman keepers. That's got to get you excited for the future. It's also pretty interesting to uh, note how young both these teams are, the two youngest teams in their conference. It's be interesting to see how quick these players adapt to the varsity stage. Yeah, and for a couple of young teams, they like to possess the ball, like to put a lot of emphasis on making the proper build-up to try and make things happen the right way, not just rushing the ball forward. That's something Coach Kanzler wants to see out of his squad today as the opening kickoff starts the match. Joy Segura plays it back, and the Wildcats are on the front foot. Joy Segura tries to win the ball. Instead, the Wolves come with it the other way. Here's Kat Sawyer, the sophomore. Can't make it up that touch line. This will become a Weiss throw. And they are playing this game exactly how I thought they'd be doing with uh, the refs at the corner is the top left and the bottom right on our screen here. Uh, with the ref who's not directly in the play of action, manning the sides, at least to the best of their capabilities. Uh, not going to be surprised if somebody blows a call of a ball going <laughs> just over the line. It lets me nice now. Okay, it's the first minute of the game as we, oh, we get the clock moving here. My apologies on that one. Let's be nice here. It's a clean slate out there for the officials today. This one goes over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick for the Wildcats. And we'll see how Almazan chooses to set up the attack. An attack for Elgin that Coach Kanzler said has been lacking a bit of bite lately, but he is encouraged by the play of their talented midfielders. We'll see if they can deliver the proper service balls in to those leading attackers today. Jasmine Estrada, one of the captains, is somebody that Coach Cancer is looking to get on the score sheet today. Along the near touch line, the ball played in for Sawyer, but it's dealt with here and a smart play by the defender. Tori McDonald kicked that one off of Sawyer. It'll become an elegant throw.
up the touchline. Dangerous ball played in now for Weiss. Wolves on the front foot. Sophia Reyes has to take it away. Wildcats look to push, but they only get it as far as Alicia Warthen, the senior, who now plays along the right flank. Chips one in off the oh. crossbar. Kat Sawyer on the ball, left side of the box. She takes a right-footed effort that bends just wide, so already the Weiss Wolves on the doorstep early as that one hit the crossbar. Almazan, an aggressive keeper, loves to come out and cut off the angles, but that time she was nearly chipped, Dylan. That is one tough call and one tough shot and a really good execution there from just outside the 18. So the Wolves see the first chance of the game go their way. Elgin perhaps a bit fortunate as the Wolves remain on the front foot here. That is this some is, impressive footwork. This is Carlin Judge, impressive footwork until it was taken away, and Crystal Jaimez will help lead the counterattack for the Wildcats. Jaimez regains possession. Now it's, now it's Yasmin Estrada. Played back for Chavarin. Good ball ahead for Joy Segura. And a ball is just a bit too much weight on it there. That midfield is doing a pretty good job at playing some nice one-touch football there. Along the far touch line, Wolves in control. Trying to work something up in the midfield. Sarah Rogers plays it up for Laney, DK, and Gakwe. DK and Gakwe down the right touch line. Now cuts it back inside. Beautiful step over. An effort into the box that just misses the far post. That is one close call. Close calls or close call. Keeper doing a nice job of just keeping that ball just off net there, though. And the Wildcats doing well to survive an early surge here from Weiss who is just white hot on offense. And of course, they're in those white uniforms today. 11 goals in two games. You don't see that across many levels of soccer, let alone at the varsity level here. Not at all. You notice as players get older, not only does offense get better, but defense gets better too. So to see a high-scoring game, must have meant either everything was going right or nothing was going right. Now a dangerous ball into the box is dealt with here by Isabella Montemayor who now controls. Played back well for Rosales, who plays it up ahead. McDonald turns it over, but Elgin once again diffusing the threat. Early activity for Weiss in the midfield. Laney, DK, and Gakwe, the junior, making things happen. Now a ball played in up the right line, and perhaps a misplay from the defender. This sees Carlin Judge playing in a ball. It landed on the left foot of Kat Sawyer, but she couldn't get around on it. And I believe this will be a throw from the corner flag for Elgin. With nearly five minutes played here in this first half, just over five minutes played. Looks like they're going to make this a goal kick, actually, much to the chagrin of the Weiss head coach, Kelsey Hill. I think that's the right call. The ball definitely went over the goal line there. It's just difficult for that sideline ref from that angle to see exactly where it did cross that black line. So if it hits the flag, what's the call there? Uh, it honestly depends on point of entry, uh, as well as discretion of the ref. Uh, usually there, uh, hitting the flag and going towards the goal line after hitting the flag will result in a goal kick, or at least in this case, if it were the offense to have the ball go that way. If it were to hit the flag and to go out off the touchline, it would be a throw-in. This will be a Weiss throw-in. Nothing, nothing ambiguous about that call along the near touchline as Weiss has held the possession for probably 80% of the first five minutes here. That comes out to four minutes. I'm no math major, but I can do that one for you. Tia Miller, the junior, will get set to throw. A strong ball into the box. Chance now for Sophia Reyes, the junior, who didn't quite get enough of it. Wildcats look to clear. It only gets as far as Alicia Warthen. Her effort is just past the left post. 
goal kick coming, and perhaps Weiss could have benefited from a bit more patience there. Most definitely so, but it's definitely good uh, good doing on the Elgin defense to stave off an attack that's been lasting for this long. Yeah, this young Elgin defense looking to step up. A, a relatively young Elgin team in general, you mentioned in the open, Dylan, and the fact that these are two of the younger teams in the district, so plenty of players that will be hopefully playing for the next few years, improving a couple of programs that are mid-table right now, but hoping to maybe be top of the table in due time. As this goal kick is played up ahead, and a ball in for Joyce Segura, who gets her first touch in a little while. Segura, one of the biggest offensive catalysts for Elgin. Wildcats earn a throw. Looks like it'll be Montemayor to take it. Played up for Segura. Nice soft touch to Grace Segura, her sister. The twins, Grace and Joyce Segura, 19 and 29. A big part of what Elgin will try and do up that near side of the pitch. Now a ball played to Sarah Rogers, the junior. Into the sunlight. Joy Segura takes it away. Nice through ball. Does not quite connect with Estrada. Just Throw in by. for Weiss. That's a tough break there, especially when you're just starting to see some offensive production on this side of the pitch. Looking for a change in fortunes here. Well, they get the air to throw to the Wildcats. Lady Cats looking to build on this momentum. Before they head on the road the rest of the week. Only one home game to go after this one for the Lady Cats. It's a week from Friday, March 12th. They take on Hendrickson, the arch rival of Weiss, who Weiss actually has next up on their schedule. Pflugerville Weiss High School, of course, as a foul is whistled on Elgin. Pflugerville Weiss High School, of course, the newest high school in Pflugerville ISD. And they took away a lot of the student body from Hendrickson. So Weiss and Hendrickson have a nice little rivalry going across all the sports. As this headed ball is dealt with nicely by Rosales. Now Ngakwe back on the ball to her right foot and she's hit the crossbar again. And that one's hit the football goal post so it's out of play. That is shot after shot right there. That is the same, the same winger Taking the same shot over and over. You have to think that she's due here. Just again, great job by the defense and the keeper saving off yet another attack. Yeah, Laney DK and Gakwe has nicked the crossbar twice now on two efforts. You could argue it's almost even harder to hit the crossbar than it is to put one in the goal. <laughs> you could. Have. It's the last thing Weiss fans want to hear right now as this one is played all the way down into the attacking third. Chance for Elgin to apply a bit of pressure. Rosales... Or rather, Segura. Check that. Grace Segura pressuring the ball, earning an Elgin throw. So we'll see if the Wildcats can establish themselves in the offensive half. As we near the quarter mark in this first half, 40 minute halves here at Elgin. Montemayor's throw. Headed by Joy Segura. Kept alive out of the corner. Now a Cross is a bit too weighted. Looking for Estrada. Estrada calms it down. Turns. Jasmine Estrada still on the ball. <laughs> Estrada with it again. Cross played into the middle. And a little trouble near the goal line. But eventually it's handled. Haley Medlock bobbled it for a moment. That could have been one costly miscue, but... Luckily for her, she managed to get her foot on the edge of that ball just at the last moment there. Yeah, the last moment is right. Could have been a huge momentum swing after Weiss has gotten the better of the play early. Elgin could have nicked one back, but now here's Weiss on the counter. Excellent through ball. Played to Kat Sawyer. Sawyer wins the ball, but apparently did so illegally. They call a foul. A little aggressive there. Uh, nothing sticks out in particular. Just a, ca just a caution there would make sense right call but again just trying to keep things level-headed here talk to coach Kanzler before the game the uh, the boss for Elgin and he um, he reiterated that Weiss is not a team that's gonna overwhelm you physically but they're gonna pass the ball and move it so well and he said his team learned a lot from playing them in the earlier meeting just how how they need to properly build up an attack rather than just huffing the ball forward 
right here. Elgin had some semblance of that, but they do give the ball back. Taken away by Carlin Judge, the leading scorer for Weiss. A lot of speed, a lot of quick play, a lot of tiki-taka. One touch, getting the ball from one player to the next. Not, yeah. not leaving anybody with too much space, not leaving anybody with too much time, but just enough to make good runs. Look at this build-up right here. Judge's ball is a bit too weighted. Four or five good passes in a row, and you're right, Dylan. Just the way Coach Kanzler expected Weiss to play. He said it was, you know, last time they played, it was a very well-played match, and because he has so much respect for this potent offense that Weiss brings into the game, he, he said maybe today, Elgin, they're going to try and keep it a little bit low scoring, try and win this game 1-0, 2-1, do just enough offensively to keep uh, Weiss at bay because this, this offense requires a whole lot of attention. A ton of players back in the formation today. You can tell that Coach Kanzler has a lot of respect for for the attack that Weiss has. Now a counter-attacking opportunity for Elgin. He did mention how speedy both these teams were, and you have to think that this could come down to a war of attrition type of deal, or it's who's going to stay speediest to quick, or who's going to stay quickest the longest, rather. Yeah, well, in that in that regard, we'll see. Both teams are not the deepest, only about five to seven women on the bench for each squad. Segura plays it up to her twin sister. Joyce Segura turns, plays it inside for Jaimes. Jaimes lays it off Chavarin. Back to Jaimes. Controls forward. Through ball into the box. Chavarin chases down in the corner. Keeps it alive. It's dealt with here by the defense. And this will become a Weiss throw. Nicely done back there by Samantha Jarvis, a freshman, unfazed. Now up the wing it goes to Carlin Judge. Judge along the far touch line. Play ball, th uh, through ball played in to Ngakwe. And this is going to be held off just long enough. Whoa, it got away that time from the keeper, Almasan, and has to be dealt with by the defender. And that, was, that was a smart play built up right from the get-go with that throw, and that was a quick restart of play. They kind of threw the Elgin ladies off balance a little bit and really made that push forward all much easier. In the attacking third, a ball into Sophia Reyes, who takes a lot of corners. She lays a cross in. Almazan struggles to handle it, but eventually does. Both goalies now have seen balls bounce off of their hands, and both could consider it fortunate to remain nil-nil. Well, everybody gets one. We all know that. <laughs> now DK and Gakwe back on it. Laney DK. Nice challenge to win the ball back, though, by Sophia Reyes who gives it away. Left-footed pass by Rosales up to Segura. Joy Segura with a bit of a heavy first touch and this will be dealt with. Elgin throw. Starting to see a little bit more of a better share of possession closer to that 50-50 mark. Yeah, the game's starting to open up a bit here. A little bit more end-to-end -end action. Makes things a little bit more interesting for everyone. Segura's Ball into the box. This is going to be a tricky one. It falls down. It's dealt with well in the end by the defense. This is Sarah Rogers on it. Over the touchline. Elgin throw. A misplay there. Looked like Tia Miller got a bit confused. Miller trying to win the ball back. Sarah Rogers ahead in effort. Everybody just throwing legs at it. This is going to become a goal kick. Wasted opportunity there for the Wildcats. So just when I thought the game was opening up, bit of a sloppy sequence, but goal kick taken, ball back into play. But hey, you're going to get that sometimes. sometimes. It's not necessarily about quantity of possession, it's about quality of possession. Nicely won there by Montemayor. Up to Grace Segura, in along the right side, and a cross was a bit too close to the keeper. Handled there by Medlock. Medlock's punt. Gets out to about the 50 on a bounce. It's where you see those punts bounce too many times and a foul there. A yeah, little touch foul there on Chavarin. Sends it over to Weiss. As we're nearly, nearly halfway through our first half. It surely seems like all these girls have gotten there first couple minutes jitters out of the way. 
Yeah, good observation. We'll see if it leads to a goal. Here's Laney DK and Gakwe. Dangerous ball. Gets all the way in, though. Nicely defended by Elgin. And strongly punted by Almazan. Maybe a bit too strongly. Goes all the way over the attacking player. Now Yasmin Estrada on the ball. Estrada, one of the three captains for the Wildcats. As this ball is played along the far touch line for Laney DK Ngakwe. She nears the box, tries to turn with it, is defended by Tori McDonald, the left back. Laney DK Ngakwe's cross is dealt with by McDonald. Corner kick. Uh, DK Ngakwe, time and time again. She is really hammering the front side. Yeah, it's different contributors every day for this Weiss team. They do get most of their goals from the same four or five attackers, but any one of them can go off for a multiple goal effort. I mean, when you score, the Weiss Wolves have scored 27 goals already in district play. The Wildcats just eight. Corner ball swung in. And dealt with by Tori McDonald, who has a great couple of plays in a row here defensively. You can see why Coach Cancelor trusts her at left back. Still on the ball, though, for Weiss is Sophia Reyes. Has it taken away? Nicely done there by Crystal Jaimes. Jaimes still on the ball. Played up ahead for Estrada. Yasmin Estrada muscled off the ball that time by Sarah Rogers. Judge. Tried to connect with Ngakwe on the through ball. Comes all the way back to the keeper, Almasan. Judge takes a run at it and draws a foul. Set piece coming for Weiss. Getting a little chippy there, but good job by the ref to break that up and restart play. And now a chance. Yeah, first set piece for either side, really. It'll be Carlin Judge, the senior, lining up behind the ball. Swings one into the box, trying to chip the keeper, and it just goes over the cage. And they are just inching ever closer to putting one in one of those top bins up there. So the first set piece of the game ends unsuccessfully. Elgin will look to win some more set pieces going forward. Coach Kanzler said his team has really done a good job earning the set pieces in recent games. They just haven't been able to convert them. So far today, it's been Weiss getting the juicier of the opportunities, I would say. Wildcats looking to get some momentum going after snapping a three-game losing streak in their last match. Nicely played into the middle by Tia Miller. I've been doing a good job of pushing the ball forward, at the very least. When, they, when it seems like their back is against the wall at times, they're getting a good job of getting that ball out of there and trying to make something happen on the opposite side. Sarah Rogers plays it back. Heavy touch, but kicked away. Up the right wing. They've tried to explore that right wing to Laney DK and Gakwe. Her and Carlin Judge have had some nice interplay. Now it's Rays. Played back for Rogers. Rogers pushing forward now. Her right footed effort is just wide. Looked like that one was going to be right at about crossbar level. And wide to the left. Again, inching ever so close, but just not enough put one on the board. And another aggressive line that time from the keeper. Bit of a worm burner there. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, it's when the ball doesn't get more than three inches off the ground, but comes in with a little bit of heat. It burns the worms on the ground. Do worms live in turf? <laughs> I'm going to guess probably <laughs> not. I'm just, I'm just pressing you a little bit here, just giving you a hard time, as this ball is pressed in one for a moment by Elgin, but the Wolves take it back. Wolves sharing, of course, a 
logo with the Premier League's Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wolves. Don't know of a Wildcat team in the club soccer world, as this is perhaps misplayed over the goal li over the end line by Montemayor. They really share a logo with Wolverhampton. Well, not if the they same do, logo, perhaps but... they'll be getting some uh, divine aid from Kanye West, who once tweeted, "I'm a fixed Wolves," and I quote. Did he, did he mean the football club Wolves? No, but uh, the Wolverhampton community assumed he did and thought that there was some type of partnership deal. Assuming we know what Kanye West means is a dangerous game, Dylan. Oh, very much so. <laughs> never, never want to assume. Err on the side of caution with that. Corner played in. Not quite dealt with just yet, but cleaned up nicely. So far, it's been the Elgin defense that have answered the bell. They've been under pretty consistent pressure from the visiting Wolves. Tia Miller with a throw. Rogers has her pass get only as far as Rosales. Rosales wins the ball back to Estrada. Played back and then out. Carlin Judge turns, leaves her Rays. Sophia Rays lines one up and it's handled. Another save for Almasan. The shots just keep on coming, though, for the Wolves. This is a really impressive display by a freshman goalkeeper coming up to this level and really taking a bunch of shots here and not letting anything through thus far. Yeah, you know what they say, you know, when you get this late in the season, you're underclassmen, and they're not really underclassmen anymore, and, you know, you expect them to play as such, gaining experience as the season goes along, and... You know, as the Wildcats continue here down the stretch of district play, their young players have, have really improved. That's something you really like to see moving forward. Bodes very well for any any one program to have a good group of talented younger players really step up when they need it the most. Long stretch of play without stoppages, and then all of a sudden a big stoppage, and now some substitutions entering the game for Coach Kanzler. Kara Gibson, as well as Crystal Velasquez, enter the game. And looks like a third substitution as well. Get you that name in just a moment. As Kara Gibson looks to make her mark in the attacking third. Quickly helps her team win a throw. Wolves have not gone to the bench too much in this one. That could change as we near the end of the first half. A little fatigue. As Elgin just can't seem to establish themselves in the attacking third. Maybe they will here. As this ball is played back to Allison Carter, one of the captains. Her ball hit a bit heavily, but she's bailed out by Tori McDonald. McDonald plays it up to Segura. Into the box. Caught up with, though, and swept away by Adeline Diaz. Judge on the far side. Back to Rogers. In the middle of the park, where Sarah Rogers has been good today. Over to her co captain, Sophia Reyes. The junior and the senior linking up. Kat Sawyer. Played back for Rogers, who couldn't connect with Sawyer. Elegant throw. Up the touchline it goes. And Dylan, this is a rule I've never understood. There's no offsides on a throw-in. Hold on, we'll get to that in a moment. This is Grace Segura in on the right flank. Gibson tries to win it back. And Gibson is fouled. Set piece coming here for Weiss. From a tough angle, though. For Elgin, I should say. Most likely here, they're going to have to thread the ball through and try to set something up in the middle here. But you never know. You could pull a miracle out of a hat, try to put one into one of these corners here. But my guess is, and based on the way they're playing this, they're going to try to throw this ball through to the middle. They set up relatively quickly. Segura's ball into the box is punched away. And looks like Weiss is going to be able to clear this out. Carlin Judge was right there for the punch. Credit there to the keeper, Haley Medlock. Made it look pretty easy. And Gakwe working against McDonald. And he puts it right through the legs. Here comes Weiss quickly ahead on the counter. Laney DK and Gakwe on the ball. Played in for Rays, and she skies it over the cage. A chance wasted for the Wolves. And that is just another 
really, really close chance for Laney DK and Ngakwe. And you know what? When it's your night, it's your night. And it may just be Laney DK and Ngakwe's night tonight. Yeah, she does seem to be due for a goal. Right there, her pass set up Sophia Reyes with some prime real estate right in front of that net. Catherine Sawyer gets it on a nice interplay. Her ball in was affected, though, by Montemayor. And the Elgin defense again deals with the task. So, so far, so good for Coach Kanzler's bunch defensively. It was an excellent effort all around just to keep this score nil-nil the way it is. It's more impressive itself than some of these goals that have just missed the net. Yeah, and if you're just joining us, it's been the Wolves on the front foot offensively for most of the evening, which is a beautiful evening, by the way. 65 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, but that's another story. If you're just joining us, Weiss hit the crossbar in the game's first couple of minutes, and that's really set the tone. The first half story has been the near misses for the Wolves. Might want to credit defensive player again to that upper post. Well, a little early for that. There could still be some heroics out of that back line. A Cinderella story of metal and plastic. And a back line today that is without Isabella Estrada, who is nursing a knee injury. Not the only injury that is plaguing this Elgin team at the moment, as this is dealt with by McDonald. Back out to Judge. This is an Elgin team playing without LT, Lisbeth Turubiar excuse me, Turubiartes. Lisbeth is the captain of the team, senior, who has had to miss some time nursing an ankle. Gibson nearly had it. Middle of the pitch now, Rosales. Headed to herself. Up ahead for Segura, who finds it and pursues. Grace Segura looking to get around the defender. Goes down to the turf there. Winning the ball back is Gibson. Turning towards the box. Gibson to her right foot. Tried to play a cross in. Now it goes back to Rosales. Rosales staying on the ball. Her through ball is... Dealt with and cleared. Throw into Elgin. And like the coach mentioned earlier, he said there wasn't going to be a bunch of getting overwhelmed physically here. So you see Elgin trying to take advantage of maybe getting a little bit physical themselves while pushing forward towards the goal. Could that be the missing ingredient, Dylan, to this Elgin attack? A little bit of physicality. You know, it might just be. I mean, I've noticed a little bit of uh, the Wolves on the front side of the ball getting pretty aggressive on net. And maybe that's the missing key. A little, a little firepower here. Uh, looks like offside there. Ball goes back to Weiss. So, so much for there being no offside on a on a throw, I guess. Uh, I don't actually think that was the call. Not to try to. Oh, illegal throw. Wrong. You're right. That it was, was yeah. yeah. Her foot that, came up. That was a legal throw. The ref signaled with the foot back there. Looks like her foot left the ground. Just a touch too early. And for those of you watching at home, Dylan next to me just did a uh, a physical demonstration of uh, <laughs> of uh, what went wrong on that throw. You know what? It helps me visualize. Now nothing like poking a little fun. Here's Gibson into the box, and Medlock comes out to get it. So, Dylan, how often, how strict do, did you have to be with that when you were, uh, you know, officiating in this uh, Is that the assistant's call normally? Um, it's really anybody's call, uh, especially with that. Um, I usually ref soccer from the ages of maybe U8 to U13, so kind of in the developmental phase when it comes to learning and growing the game. So, of course, there are mistakes here and there, but at this level, there's no room for error. So if you lift your foot up a little bit too early, that ball's going the other way. But when I refed in youth soccer, uh, if you if you messed up once or twice, you'd be like, hey, you know what? This is what went wrong. Don't do it again. We'll let you restart with the ball just so you remember. But it was, it was like a gentle caution without causing too much negative feedback. Just trying to t teach them the game before they get old enough to the point where those errors are costly. I love it. Seeing the uh, the role of an official as not just a uh, not just a arbiter, but also a teacher. Someone's going to help grow the game. Love that. Up ahead now. The other way, and a chance. Dangerous looking for Rays. Into the box, Laney DK and Gakwe tried to turn, had her pass dispossessed by McDonald. Counter chance for Elgin. Crystal Velasquez played a ball up ahead. Now recovers it. Velasquez, heavy touch, and she oh. tripped there. Get, getting the ball back, though, is Crystal Jaimes. Crystal to Crystal. The old turf monster. Yeah, made a trip over the 50-yard line there. 
But Jaimes is up on her feet, and she's got the ball back again. Rosales, nicely played ball for Gibson, who pursues it. Gibson played back nicely. Couldn't connect with Segura. Montemayor comes in. Miller. Montemayor chips it ahead again. Wildcats trying to chase it into the box here, and a bit of over-pursuit that time from the attackers. Catherine Sawyer has her pass taken away. Intercepted by Chavarin. Her uh, through ball is just a bit too far for Segura, who was onside on the play, but it becomes a goal kick. That ref there jumped the gun a little bit. Had the offsides call ready, but no need for it when the ball was just a bit too far out of play. So now some substitutions. Yasmin Estrada and Joy Segura check back into the game. Kara Gibson exits, as does Grace Segura. Those two were, were combining pretty well. Not a bad uh, few minutes stretch there for Elgin. Perhaps gave the defenders a bit of relief. You love to see the uh, increased aggressiveness that uh, kind of sparked earlier uh, when maybe they figured it out themselves that that aggression was the missing piece they needed to get the ball rolling a little bit more. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments are, are made in a tight match like this. Those always kind of fascinate me in, uh, in soccer. Chance for Weiss to relieve the pressure here in the midfield. Miller looked to get a foothold. Ball misplayed by Warthen. And McDonald on the ball. Played nicely to Estrada. And this will actually be a Weiss throw. Miller's throw in. Headed away. Only as far as Judge. Ball won by Reyes with some space. Sophia Reyes. Wards off Montemayor. Plays a through ball in that hits oh. the referee. Despite his best efforts, it hits him right on the back. But now play has come to a stop. What's the procedure here, Dylan? This is why I'm happy to have you up here. What happens if the ball hits an official like that where there was an attacker open? Is this going to be a set piece for Weiss? So my guess here, and it honestly, again, depends. Is oh, it's a drop ball. So, yeah, they did a drop ball here. There are two restarts of play here that could have gone either way. Uh, the drop ball or the indirect free kick. Uh, the goal of the ref is to stay, stay as far away from the ball as possible while staying as much in the play as possible. So, it's happened to me. It happens to every ref. You get hit with the ball. The ball goes through your legs. It grazes you. Or it hits you square on the back like it did just there. And it's really up to the discretion of the ref to determine how to appropriately resume play without getting any chirps from either one of the, the benches. There's a foul and a set piece coming near the corner. Tori McDonald was doing very well to block the crosses, but she got a little too aggressive right there. And so with just over five minutes to play here in our first half, it is going to be a Weiss set piece. Allison Carter, the captain, directing traffic defensively for Elgin as the Wolves put five women in the box and now the action starts on the set piece good ball in dangerous but headed aside by Carter dealt with well by the defensive captain Ray still on the ball though Wolves not done Miller played nicely to judge along the right wing into the box judges ball hits a defender once again just in the nick of time this Some truly white is a screaming for a handball there. Sorry to cut you off, Dylan. No worries. This truly is a uh, defensive showcase. I mean, proof in the pudding right here that whatever they're, whatever they're going over in practice with their defensive formations, their their alignments are working just perfectly tonight. Still a lot of match left to play, but the first half nearly gone, and despite dis you know, the way it's gone. Well, we'll see what happens after this quarter here. Judge swings the ball in. And this will be... I think it's going right back. Another corner. The way this half has gone now, if it were to end scoreless, you would think the Wildcats would be content, whereas the Wolves may feel like they let an opportunity slip through their grasp. But we'll see. Weiss, as a team, has been slightly better in the first half this year than they have in the second, but recently they've had some dramatic comebacks, so throw that out the window. Judge shielding the sun from her eyes as she takes the corner. 
Another dangerous ball fluttered in. Almasan got a piece of it, and it was cleaned up by Estrada, the attacker, chipping in on defense. Now Joy Segura tries to win it in the midfield, but turning with it safely is Avery Stansberry, the junior. Carlin kinda, Judge on the far side. It's kind of back to that lopsided, not lopsided, but a little more possessive attributes for the Wolves. Judge with a cross that finds its way behind the net. You got to imagine that uh, the offensive production by the Wolves, or rather a lack thereof, is going to put a fire under the bellies of not just them, but uh, under Elgin as well to kind of continue to save that off and maybe push it the other way a little bit. Yeah, Elgin, who kept a clean sheet on their last match against Cedar Creek, are two and a half minutes away from doing so in the first half here tonight, which is kind of a feat given the way it's gone. Now, nobody seems to want to take charge in the middle here. Segura puts a strong head to it. Estrada in pursuit. Wolves play it back. Misplay. Throw in coming for Elgin. Quickly, it's taken by Montemayor. And it goes off the defender that time. Ashton Johnson, the junior, was in the way. Another throw coming. That's one way to get the ball forward. Just might work out. Yeah, they're matriculating it up the field. Maybe not quite the way Coach would have drawn it up, but they'll take it. Montemayor's ball to the feet of Segura. Can't control it, but another throw coming. Ashton Johnson was the last to touch it. It's just a matter of getting this ball into the middle, giving yourself a little bit of space, and lining up one good shot. Last 90 seconds of our first half here. Into the box. Clear to side, and an elegant throw. A little bit of caution over there near the sideline. Weiss perhaps just trying to get to the half here. 67 seconds remaining, and a throw in violation, so that's going to stunt the momentum here for Elgin before the break. And with only 56 seconds on the clock, we'll see if anything can form here for the Wolves. That's been an unfortunate momentum killer for them now twice. Yeah, you're keep right. those feet on the ground. Chavarin wins the ball. Played nicely into the center of the park for Velasquez. And a long effort. Short hop the keeper. Jaimes was the one who put it into the box. Or rather, Jasmine Estrada. Check that. Only 30 seconds to play in the half. It's been an eventful couple of minutes here offensively for Elgin. Great job by the keeper there just to anticipate that short hop and rather than getting trying to get her hands on it and Perhaps miscuing it again. Lovely. Letting it hit her in the legs. Well, Stop lovely interplay here in the middle, but only 10 seconds to go in the half. Surely oh. they're going to have a couple additional minutes, as they do. No, no, they don't. They don't have any more stoppage time. That's going to do it for the end of this first half. Nil-nil here at Wildcat Stadium as Elgin and Weiss with an entertaining first half that produced everything but a goal. Drawn at zero, but there were a lot of cards yet to play, a lot of opportunities, a lot of open shots, especially for Weiss, missing it, mi missing the goal or hitting the crossbar just over by maybe a few inches to a foot. It's only a matter of time that one of those somehow finds net, and even the other way around. Got to keep those feet on the ground of those throw-ins, but if you can manage to move that ball a little towards the middle and get some shots like they managed to with a couple minutes left in the half, Maybe you have some time to turn things around. Get yourself a couple shots on goal yourself. Yeah, we'll get some of your keys to the second half, Dylan. Love having you here. We'll keep you as long as you can stay. We'll be back for some of the halftime report presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors right after this. Jake Herman, Dylan Zisman with you on Vibe Live. See you in just a moment after a word from our sponsors. Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe. BYPE dot com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle to the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From the cross to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott and White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Halftime on Vibe Live is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there, Dylan. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. I gotta head over there soon, Dylan. I know I mentioned this to you the other day. Get a new baseball glove. Yeah, uh, I actually <laughs> remember getting my first baseball glove, and that's actually exactly where I got it. I went to Academy myself. Uh, I actually still have that glove. Uh, I used it from T-ball when I was five years old until my freshman year of high school when I was 15. So it lasted me the better part of 10 years. I might have to have you back for some baseball. I'm not sure when that uh, season's going to start for me just yet. But anyway. Oh, uh, boy, I love myself <laughs> in baseball. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge uh, when we get there. We're not going to start talking Houston Astros on here. That's how everybody's going to turn Ouch. us off. So, yeah. so halftime here at Wildcat Stadium, a first half that saw Weiss dominate probably about three-quarters of the possession. They had the majority of the shots. Elgin really only able to muster a couple of shots, only one of which was on target. What do the Wildcats have to do to establish themselves in the attacking third here in the second half? I think it's a matter of building momentum. They really have something going on the defensive side of the ball. And if they can just somehow translate that to moving past midfield and perhaps getting a shot on goal more than they were already getting, it's just a matter of that team cohesiveness. Maybe a matter of people in the backfield bringing the ball up a little bit and trying to push that whole cell forward just a little bit more. What have you liked defensively out of this Elgin squad? I, I like the aggressiveness. Um, I know we mentioned earlier that maybe aggression is the way to kind of win this game. And I like the fact that they're really going after. They're really trying to 
make sure that they've got things covered down closer to the 18 inside the box. And uh, almost on the keeper is doing a really, really good job on her end, keeping that ball away from goal. And she's had her miscue here and there, but she hasn't let that stop her from really putting on a highlight, a highlight reel of displays. And just for being as young as she is, it's really impressive that she's taking shot after shot and hasn't let anything slip through for her yet. Yeah, a couple of times today, Almazan's taken a pretty aggressive line on the ball, and it's worked because she's forced Weiss into shooting a little earlier, earlier than they may have wanted to. Uh, a couple of times, the Wolves hit the crossbar. And, you know, this is something that's probably a welcome sight for both Almazan and the coaching staff at Elgin, including head coach Taylor Kanzler, assistant coach Heather Clapper, because they told me Almasan having a great season. The only way she's been getting burned are on a couple of long distance chip shots, just because as a freshman isn't necessarily the tallest and you know, she's been chipped a couple of times this season. So a welcome sight for her to see the ball hit the crossbar twice in that first half. Maybe that'll give her the energy to come up with the saves she'll need to in the second half if Elgin wants to keep Weiss off the board. What about on the Weiss side of things? What ingredient are they missing offensively? And how can they break this deadlock if they're coming up with a halftime game plan? So the first thing I'm looking at is they've taken a lot of shots on goal, and unfortunately, not all of them have gone their way. But what I have noticed is that they feel a little trigger happy, and that they're really trying to pull shots off. And you mentioned earlier how Almasan maybe isn't the tallest keeper out there. Now she's gotten burned on a few chip shots, and I've noticed that they've been trying to chip her from out deep for a little bit now. But maybe bringing the ball in another 5-10 yards and trying to put one middle in, maybe go in the bottom corners, try to beat her with a little bit of speed. Maybe that's the way to do it. Yeah, well, this has to be frustrating for the Wolves, who are accustomed to scoring a lot of goals. In the reverse fixture, they won 2-0 against this Elgin squad, and as I mentioned in the open, they just put up five goals. That's half the goals that Pflugerville has let up in all of district play. They put up five goals on the number one team in the district just yesterday. So maybe they, you know, used all their firepower in that one, or maybe they have something good in store for this second half. Well, we're about to find out. Yeah, halftime nearing its end here, only about a minute before the teams retake the field. We'll step away for one last quick moment and have second half action when we come back on Vipe Live. We would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Lady Cats break the huddle and come back out onto the pitch for what should be an exciting second half here at Wildcat Stadium. I'm Jake Herman. He's Dylan Zisman. 
We're glad you're with us at home. Of course, now some of you guys that wanted to attend this game aren't able to because of the restrictions. Only two fans allowed per player in this game. That goes for both Elgin and Weiss. So either way, if you couldn't make it because of that, we're glad you're here with us as Weiss will get the ball rolling to start our second half any moment. Looks like it'll be Catherine Sawyer to get it started. As soon as the officials give the ready. 40 minutes left to determine a winner between these two. Of course, if we do remain tied, then it would end as such. For Elgin, it would be their second tie of the year. For Weiss, it would be their third. In the defensive half, the Wolves try and get forward with it. But a pass can't connect that time. Diaz was looking for Mueller and instead found the sideline. Can Elgin find their way into a good chance? Tory McDonald unintentionally megs the defender. That's out of bounds. Last touched by Montemayor. And it's my understanding that there's actually no out of bounds in soccer. It's just over the touchline. So I should not be saying out of bounds. Uh, to each their own. Uh, <laughs> I get it, Americans are going to say whatever they want when it comes to defining the rules of a game. That so I've yeah. heard out of bounds. I've heard out of play. I've heard over the touchline, beyond the touchline. It really doesn't matter, as I was long as the ref's going to put up a hand. I was hoping you were going to end that sentence the way you did, and not just limit it to soccer, because Americans, they're going to say whatever they want about anything. Oh, <laughs> as, let's not get into that. As ju well, you know, especially in the sports world, as Judge turns with it. Nicely done along the near touchline. Oh, it just rolls over That's in the judgment call. of the official. Throw in towards the center of the park. Last touch by Crystal Jaimes. You know, it's just similar to how uh, anything in any one sport can be called multiple different names. There's a hundred different ways to say what a home run is in baseball. There's a hundred different ways to say making a shot in basketball. So to say a ball going over the touch line, call it out, out of bounds, call it whatever you want. Punt coming from Almazan. See who takes charge of this ball. Nicely done defensively. Still a dangerous ball into the left side of the box. Johnson chases after it. Played up by Segura. Elgin defense really putting the team on their shoulders right now. Trying to push something forward. Yeah, it's been the, the back four, the back five, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes it's been a back 11 yeah. for Elgin today. Indeed it has. Throw into Weiss on the far touch line again. It always seems like they have just enough ladies there to get the job done. Uneventful first two minutes of our second half. Nobody seeming to take a grip. This game just feels like it's up there for grabs right now. Earlier it looked like Weiss was in a position to maybe take control early. But after Elgin dodged a slew of chances, the game really right now feels like it's hanging in the balance. And maybe they are taking that advice that I thought their coach would give them, which was try to move that ball just an inch closer to goal before you try to pull that trigger. Nicely played for Judge. Ball didn't have enough pace on it. That was Isabella Estrada, who's limited today with that knee injury. Able to clear it out. Nice to see her making a contribution despite nursing the injury. If you're just joining us, the captain for Elgin, Lisbeth Turubiartes, still out today. Nursing that ankle injury. The team's also missing Maria Yanez and Courtney Shepard, a couple of exciting freshmen. Maybe contributing to that lack of attacking punch for Elgin. Well, the story today has been the freshman, or at least for uh, the Elgin side, at least for Alma Sun. She's really been, at least in my opinion, putting the team on her back and like I said, how this has been a defensive game from the Elgin standpoint, uh, she kind of leads the charge on that. She's the final boss. 
and nobody's been able to penetrate that wall just yet. Yeah, and credit at the back, too, to Allison Carter, the captain, the Very center back, job. bossing the game from that position, as this will be goal kick. Allison Carter, again, was in the range of that play. Montemayor defending a late run there. Lanny DK and Gakwe made a bid for it, but... This is played into the middle, and finally, some nice one-touch football from Elgin. Montemayor after it. Ball's won by Tia Miller. Only as far as Grace Segura, who can't quite steer that one into play. The beginning of this half is very reminiscent of the beginning of the first half, with Elgin kind of having to concede a little bit and push all of their ladies back to the back side. Like you said, that back 11 might just... How, well, how about, how about, sorry to cut you off. How about that ball by Coach Kanzler? Perfect pass all the way to the other end where the coaches have some experience trying to get the ball to their players as quickly as possible. You see it on every level. People trying to either prevent the ball from being touched by the other team once it's gone over the touchline or getting it to your girls as quickly as possible. There are no ball boys or ball girls, of course, due to COVID restrictions. They've got some helpful staff members around the pitch. Going after some of these balls. They put the bench players to work. Rogers' ball connects with Judge. Judge has been making a good game of it on that right wing. You can tell why she's the leading scorer for Weiss. Very dangerous. The senior just has that calming presence about her. Seems just very comfortable on the ball. Game moving a little bit slowly for her. There she is again, weaving through Wildcat defenders, but not getting anywhere. Pursued out of the, of the line of attack by Jaimes. Now a ball played in that Almazan has to deal with, but she takes charge. Punt floats all the way to that white Elgin E at the midfield line. And from the center line, Weiss once again sets up. That's where that back line has been camped out much of the start of this second half. Weiss starting to get a foothold on the offensive side of things. Here's Rays working in with it. Up ahead for Ngakwe. Her pass was interrupted by Segura. It looked like they had something going there. They did for a moment, didn't they? Just a matter of putting that final piece together. Yeah, and in a low-scoring game like this, you know, no, no rush. Get that slow build-up. Get whatever you need to create a quality chance as opposed to maybe a quantity chance. You have to imagine at the rate this game is going that one goal might just put a dagger in the entire game itself. I think it depends when. I think it depends when. Certainly if the Wildcats were to get one on the counter, it would totally change the complexion of this game. At the very least, it provides a lot more momentum than it would have otherwise. That throw maybe was going to head over the end line, but instead it's kept in. Weiss throw. Elgin defense so far maintaining their composure. But the first seven minutes of this second half, you're right, Dylan. Much like the beginning of the first half, all Weiss. Ball played in. Dealt with by the captain, Carter. Looked like a tiny bit of a miscue there. She might have been trying to push that ball out towards midfield and just caught her on the front side of the knee. And a little bit of English on that ball spun the ball the other way. But yeah. good to set up another play nonetheless. Carlin Judge gets to take the corner kick as a result. Nicely played in. Headed effort. Didn't quite reach the mouth of the goal. Elgin tries to push out with it. And they will. Over the touchline. Throw to the Wildcats. And they're going to credit that to the Wildcats. That was, uh, that was the right call. Play. That was the right call. That was the right call. It was just a very, very close play. McDonald's throw in. He's kept alive by Estrada. Calmly played ball for Jaimes. Play is switched. Montemayor. Only gets as far as Ashton Johnson, who comes ahead with it with some pace. Johnson puts too much pace on that ball. Wandered in Gakwe.
nine minutes gone here in our second half. Half that's contained very few breaks in the action. Now, a slight delay. That one's over the touch line. Dylan, it's been a pleasure having you on for this broadcast. I know you got to run. We'll we'll have you back for longer next time. I really do appreciate you dropping in. Hope you stay to the end of this attacking play as Weiss tries to get forward with it, but Elgin yeah. now tries to spring the counter. Dylan, it's been fun. I'll uh, I'll see you next time. I'm glad you had me on. I'll see you tomorrow night. All right. So Thanks for sticking with us here on Vibe Live. Jake Kerman with you on the call here from Wildcat Stadium as this effort from distance finds its way harmlessly over the, the end line. In the middle of the park. Rogers can't get it past Jasmine Estrada. Quick throw in, Laney DK and Gakwe. Gakwe. Rogers can't connect with Judge, so Elgin bothering the rhythm of Weiss here a bit in the middle of the pitch. Looking to pick and choose their moments. Wildcats in search of a goal. Maybe it'll come on the counter. Nicely done there by Tory McDonald, who has been a rock today at left back. Wins the ball. Played up ahead. Joyce Segura chasing after it. As is Montemayor. A bit of trouble at the back here. Eventually, Julia Mueller catches up with it. Plays it up ahead for Warthin. She has it taken away. Judge back on the ball. She's done a nice job of controlling the tempo when she's been on the ball. Nicely played 1-2. Rays with a good first touch. Wins a throw for Weiss. Sent back into the defensive third. Back to get it, though, is Stansbury. Played it over to Miller. So the Weiss back line hasn't had a bunch asked of them today. Excuse me, tonight. But when they have, they've been up to the task. Trying to deal with the quick counterattacking attempts of Elgin, who seems content to sit deep in their own third and try and spring a counter when the moment is right. As the lights start to take their full effect on this match. 6.42 local time. A match that began at 5.30. And still with about 26 minutes to go. Good run from Sophia Reyes. Once again trying to play it in for Gakwe. Who's won a throw? The speed of Laney DK Gakwe has caused a few problems. Her two ringing efforts off the crossbar represent the best chances either side has had in this one. McDonald played it forward, and a foul called late. Set piece from a good spot on the field for 
the wolves here. Didn't see much in that challenge from Tory McDonald. Gakwe will take it from the edge of the box. Just about 19 yards out. Four defenders forming the wall for Elgin. Gakwe's ball in. Hits the post. Follow-up effort is hit over the crossbar by Judge. Lightning strikes twice. Another effort off the frame of the goal for Gakwe, who's now hit the crossbar twice and the post. So really three times she's been robbed by the frame of the goal today. Another, another fortunate moment for Elgin. They survive yet another wise set piece. Tori McDonald, who committed the eh, rather iffy foul, will send it back forward. Only as far as Johnson. Rosales plays it back. Now a nice ball in over the top. Joy Segura follows it in. Segura at the edge of the box. Only gets as far as Diaz. Judge with a useful touch. Dealing with McDonald. And a great defensive play. Coming over to help was Jasmine Estrada. And that's last touch by Judge. So between Judge and Reyes, there's been a couple of good follow-up attempts as well for Weiss. In this ball game. Really about five quality chances for Weiss that they just had not been able to convert. Credit Almazan, credit the defense for Elgin. Throw in, tries to get up the line. Reyes takes it again. Her throw is going to be whistled. She ran too far. Twenty-three minutes to play. in this 40-minute second half. This will be a throw to Elkin. Took a nick off the defender's foot. Gibson is beat to the loose ball by Adeline Diaz. Now Judge. Miss hit it. Back to Elgin. Ball played back to Carter. Estrada's effort is thwarted. Ball in over the top. Heavy touch that time by Velasquez. Ball won by Rosales. Rosales threw ball in for Gibson, but it's intercepted by Warthen. Advances for Weiss on the far side. Throw in at about the 35-yard line, though, won by Elgin. Lady Cats looking to win their second in a row after knocking off Cedar Creek yesterday. They took care of the side at the bottom of the table. Now they try and beat the Weiss side above them. A win today would pull Elgin within about a game and a half of the playoff spot. Now a chance on the front foot. High mace. Ball played in. Gibson can't quite catch up to it. Judge the other way. 
Nice step over move. Judge into the defensive layer. Judge only makes it as far as Estrada, who plays it back now for Isabella Estrada, who connects with Velasquez. Jaimes laid off nicely for McDonald. That's actually Rosales, not McDonald, who wins an elegant throw. Towards the center, only as far as Rogers, and the junior plays a nice ball ahead for Gakwe. Gakwe turns, stays on the ball nicely as she crosses the center line. Through ball, couldn't connect with Judge. McDonald wouldn't let it get there. Gakwe is fouled by Estrada. Quick restart. Edge of the box effort, just wide. A shot that rose on Judge at the end. Carlin Judge, the senior, looks down at her boots as if to say, what do I have to do? She's had some good chances in this one and has arguably been the best player on the pitch. Nicely played from the back by Jaimes, but a heavy touch by McDonald sends it out of bounds back to Weiss. Nice anticipation on the throw-in. Velasquez won the ball. Tried to play it ahead for Gibson, but it only got as far as Worthen. Lady Cats win the ball back but can see to throw it. Throw to Gakwe, who stumbled back to the Cats. With just over 18 minutes to play, no score. Jaime tries to win the ball. Instead, it's Gakwe. Settles it down onto her right foot. Gets some help from Rogers who plays a calm ball. Rosales. Taken away by Gakwe, who's shading back towards the center of the park now. This is Rays with some space. Lays it off for Warthen, who can't get there in time. High Mace tries to get over the center line. Can't connect with Gibson. And who's going to take charge here? The ball's stuck in the center. Gakwe with a through ball. Dealt with neatly by Carter, who kicks it off of Judge. Heady play by the junior. Lady Cats win a throw. Up the near touch line. Everybody lost the ball there for a moment, except for Jasmine Estrada, who wins another Elgin throw. McDonald's throw is a good one. It sets up Gibson. Headed touch. Never quite controlled it, though. Lady Cats starting to gain a bit of a foothold. They've relieved the defensive pressure for the time being. And they're trying to mount a little sustained pressure of their own. Ball played back to Almazan, and she didn't get that much of it. All of a sudden, Weiss back on the front foot. Johnston, who's been a nice spark off the bench for Coach Hill. Turns it over. Jaimes. Saw Velasquez too late. It was intercepted by Reyes, who's nudged off the ball by Estrada. Estrada still fighting for it. Chavarin wins it. And gets fouled. Free kick to Elgin from right about the center line.
McDonald takes the kick. Some ladies forward now for Elgin. Oh, but the kick isn't a good one. It's taken away, and now a chance for Weiss on the counter. Through ball played in, dealt with that time by Carter. It only gets as far as Johnston. Johnston with a step over. Gets past her defender. Nicely played ahead for Rays. Rays down the left flank. Tried to connect with Gokwe. Gokwe wins the ball back. Rogers switches the play to Judge. Judge into the box. To her right foot. Judge's effort is dealt with nicely and covered up. Almasan it hit her right in the chest. And she was able to pick up the loose ball that came as a result. The freshman goalie answers the bell. We are still scoreless. Now a quick counter forming for Elgin. Ball won by Estrada. Who can't connect with Carter. Judge. Only as far as McDonald. McDonald can't connect with Velasquez. But Elgin wins a throw. Montemayor back into the game for Coach Kanzler. Jaimes comes off after playing a nice role in starting the last couple of Elgin attacks. Under 15 minutes to go in what's been a tense, tight affair throughout. Both teams have had their chances. Weiss perhaps has had the better of the chances. They've been robbed a couple of times, both by the frame of the goal and by the goalkeeper herself, Julie Almasan. Carter's ball forward. Looking for Gibson. Gibson controls it and slips. Tia Miller the other way. Only makes it as far as Jasmine Estrada. The captain dealt with it there. And another header from Estrada. Wolves trying to press forward. Ball takes a fortunate bounce to Rogers. Judge, who's been dangerous in this match. Plays it in, but can't get it past the elegant Lady Cats defense. And if you would have told Coach Kanzler he'd be in this position before the game, you get the feeling he would have taken it. He said they wanted to keep it low scoring today, wanted to use their defense to control the tempo a bit. But now they love a counter. Not there. Corner for Weiss. Or rather, throw for Weiss. But you get the feeling, after losing the reverse fixture over at Pflugerville, Pflugerville Weiss, last month, that Elgin, happy to be in this position, nil-nil, 12 minutes to play, Throw in near the corner flag coming for Weiss after that strong, confident play defensively by Estrada. My apologies, that's actually Rosales over there making that play. Throw in is dealt with by Carter. And they're actually going to say this is an elegant throw. Last touched off a Weiss player. Not the call I expected, but the one that Weiss, or the one that Elgin, <laughs> will prefer. And the Wildcats give it right back. Another throw for Weiss. Right back where we started, near the corner flag. With the clock nearing about 11 minutes to play. I'm Jay Kerbin. This is Vipe Live, broadcast of Elgin Women's Soccer. Nil-nil here between Elgin and Weiss. If you're just joining us, it's been a tight, entertaining affair. Weiss has had the better of the chances. Gibson trying to catch up to it. Heavy ball has to be dealt with by Diaz, but she does so well. The sophomore plays it over to Judge. Judge dealt dealing with two women marking her. And draws a foul. Another set piece coming for Weiss. 
and it will probably be Judge to take it. Carlin Judge, the senior, will look to help break the deadlock. By the time they get set up for this set piece, there will be less than 10 minutes to play in all likelihood. And nothing between these two. Far side of the box is where the attackers are. Ball goes there, and it's headed away. Now a chance for a counter off the Allison Carter defensive play. On the ball, Chavarine. Montemayor tried to win it, but it's played back to McDonald. Estrada, Esquivel, or rather Velasquez. And Gakwe's through ball connects with Judge. Judge in along the right flank. Judge is brought down, but her shot attempt was blocked by Carter. Weiss appealing for a penalty, but that's not going to be given. Allison Carter got in there and blocked the attempt, and it actually last touched off of Judge. Goal kick coming. Best case scenario there for the Lady Cats. And that's not a great goal kick. Gakwe wins it. Rays. Judge would have been offside if she had run for that one. But it's one back in the middle by Rogers. Rogers has had a tremendous work rate in the middle. Nice step over by Wharton. Her cross is thwarted. But she heads it back to herself and regains control. Nicely done in the middle. Rosales. Nice one-two with Estrada. Settled down now by Weiss. Judge. Weaving around the defense. Has Rays open. Edge of the box. Rays turning. Never quite set up for a strike. Rogers took a crack at it. Sends it bouncing into the box. Gakwe pressuring. Wins it to Judge. Judge pressured. Isabella Estrada with the defense. Corner coming. Good stretch here from the Wolves. They've been pretty dangerous attacking wise. Substitutions here. High Mace and Joy Segura return. Kara Gibson and Crystal Velasquez will exit for Coach Kanzler's squad. Corner coming with seven minutes to play. And a whistle stops the play. Foul in the box. Goal kick. Only six minutes and change. Separating these two teams from a scoreless draw. Who will break the deadlock? That's going to be a Weiss throw along the near touch line. The captain, Rays, will take it quickly. Gakwe tried to head it. It went over her head. Clearance is going to make its way just over that touch line, but not convincingly. Rays tried the same play to Gakwe. In the box, a chance, and a crossbar again. Ashton Johnson strikes iron. And for the fourth time today, Weiss just cannot get past the frame of that goal. They've really dominated the last few minutes here, but nothing to show for it. Played out onto the flank. Heavy touch by McDonald. Had Judge breathing down her neck. 
Played in for Gakwe, who switched over to that right side of the field. Working well with Judge, winning another throw. Elgin in need of some relief here. You can just feel the defense starting to feel some pressure here late in the match. As Johnston will exit for Weiss. Looks like Catherine Sawyer returns to the field. On the substitution. Rays turning in the corner. Beautiful by Rays. Play into the box. Rogers trying to turn. Can't do it. Clearance is done nicely, though, by the back four for the Lady Cats. But not all the way out. Rays on the edge of the box. Turning to her left foot. Can't do it. McDonald is there. Badgering her. And finally, Estrada with the clearance. Throw into Weiss who for the last five minutes have been on the front foot. Just over four and a half minutes to go. No score. Isabella Estrada's clearance is not convincing. Second clearance is not convincing. Still in the box. Who's going to take charge? Estrada gets it out to the side. Nicely done, forcing the throw. It's been all Weiss. Elgin trying to keep them off the score sheet here. Rays with a cross. Not dealt with convincingly. Judge turning. And Judge draws a foul at the edge of the box. Set piece coming. For Weiss, who sits just one game behind Bastrop on the table between fourth and third. And two games above Elgin between fourth and fifth. Potentially big moment for their season as Carlin Judge gets set to take the kick from the edge of the box. Here it is. Blocked by the wall. I believe it was Montemayor who got the last touch. Corner coming. It is just survival right now for the Lady Cats at the back. We'll see if they can see it through. 317 to go. Can they survive the onslaught? Corner kick from the far side, never had much on it, but it was rolling towards that near post until Grace Segura boots it away. Three minutes to play, another corner kick coming. A little urgency now from Weiss. Here it is. This one's going to go in the air. Still loose in the box. Gakwe chased out of the box. Clearance not out. Carter turning. Dispossessed by Gakwe, who goes down. No foul. Rays tries to win it back. Rogers a strike, and it's wide to the right. Nicely played pass that time. Rays laid it off beautifully to Rogers, who could take a nice little run up. Get some real power behind that strike. But just couldn't find the target. It's been the story for Weiss. McDonald. Not all the way out. Little fatigue setting in on both sides. 90 seconds to play in the match. Nothing between these two just yet. Gakwe's ball looking for Sawyer up the right flank. Sawyer turns and is tackled neatly. And a surefire defensive play by Isabella Estrada. Clock ticking now. Near a minute to play. 40 minute halves here at Elgin. Crowd appealing for a handball, and it's given against Weiss. Free kick to Elgin, and with a minute left, that could be all they needed to try and see this through and get a point. Still work to be done, though. Throw in to Weiss at the center line. All-out effort on the header from McDonald to help keep it away from the danger zone. 40 seconds to go. 
Rogers gains possession. Played to Judge on the left flank. Judge is in, left side of the box. Through ball is blocked aside. Great play by Estrada. That's Allison Carter pressuring her all the way to the end line. And this becomes a throw. Carter restarts the play. Only 15 seconds to go now. From the center line, Miller's throw. Only gets as far as Segura, but a foul. Six seconds to go, five. Bouncing ball into the box. Almazan is out to handle it. And Elgin is going to see this through to a draw. That's going to be our final score from Elgin High School tonight. No score. Elgin, nil. Weiss, nil. In a defensive effort, which Coach Kanzler and his bunch can be proud of. That is it from us here at Elgin High School. A nil-nil draw sees Elgin's record go to 3-6-1 in district play. Weiss goes to 4-2-3. And, and an unbeaten streak now of two matches for Elgin after their win against Cedar Creek coming in. One last home game for these Lady Wildcats will be on March 12th against Hendrickson. That's who Weiss will see next here in district play, and that's a big match for both of those squads. But for Dylan Zisman, who helped me out earlier, and for everyone at Vibe Live, I'm Jake Herman saying so long for now, and we'll see you next time here at Wildcat Stadium for some more elegant soccer.